Get out. Oh. Your little back just cracked. Gross. So for those of you who don't know, I started my print business with nothing but a hat heat press. This hat heat press. This is a Stahl's Hotronics cap press, and I've used this thing to make thousands of hats over the years. It has an auto open system, which allows me to multitask. It has an iron that covers and overlaps the entire print surface, which is hugely important when it comes to quality hat printing. And with some practice and a few little tricks I've come up with, you can press hats all day long on this thing without leaving behind any sort of marks or crease lines. Kind of like this hat that I'm wearing right now, roguelabmfg.com. I'm a firm believer in if you wanna get good results, you have to get good equipment. And in my opinion, this has been hands down the best hat heat press on the market for a very long time, that is. Until today. You know what, this thing is huge. Let's open it on the ground like a regular human being. I'm so excited right now. This thing has been here for a few days and I've been waiting to open it on camera. I've been wanting one of these since it was announced ages ago. Yeah. Oh, dude. This is the new Stahl's 360 IQ hat press. And man, this thing is cool. Full disclosure, Stahl's did send me this thing to test out and do a couple videos with, but my opinion cannot be bought. So clearly there's a lot of different stuff going on here between this one and the previous hat press, but probably the most notable improvement and the thing that I'm the most excited for is this new lower platen. This new platen is fully heated. So now you're getting heat from the bottom side as well as the top to make things that are normally very hard to apply, not very hard at all anymore. It's covered in their new dual silicone compound, which helps it conform to weird shapes and crevices. It's also spherically shaped now. So that helps it basically eliminate the crease marks that you would normally get from a hat heat press that run kind of along the top here where the hat's kind of getting folded over the top of the platen. Now you won't have that anymore because this top side is fully rounded off. And on top of that, they've managed to perfect the shape of this thing so well that this is now a singular platen system. So with the old hat press, there was like five or six different ones, I believe, that you'd change out of there for different size, different shaped hats, and so on. It was a real big pain in the ass. And half the time, a lot of them didn't even really fit certain hats right. These things are hugely difficult to get on there. Usually I'd have to put a little bit extra foam or a towel or something in there to get help it conform to the shape a little bit better. Now with these ones, you literally need nothing. You pull this thing out of the box and you put it to work, that's it. Actually, you know what? Let's put that to the test right now, stalls. Like I said, these things are very difficult to do on the old hat press for a couple of reasons. The first being that the front of the crown is very rounded, where the platens are not quite as round, they're a lot more gradual. So what would happen is you put this thing on there and it wouldn't make full contact with the shape of the platen, no matter how hard you pulled it down on there. The center part would always be like half an inch or a little more off the top of the platen. And if you didn't fill that gap with something, you were about to ruin a hat. And I learned this the hard way a few times. So what would happen is the center part that's not touching would end up getting squished, creased, distorted. And of course, whatever's being pressed on top of that is gonna get creased and distorted right along with it. So usually I'd have to fill that up with some kind of foam or something so that I was having solid contact all the way through. The second thing is these have a very rounded shape going this way and now this is where you can tell a hat has been heat pressed poorly from a mile away because a lot of times they're gonna have a crease line going right across the top here. It's kind of unavoidable because the hat's folding over that square edge of the platen. And I've seen some stuff out there by even some like very major brands with those things like you could see it from across the room. It just makes me go so how I used to avoid it on the old machine as well, I didn't. <laughs> like I said, it's basically unavoidable. It's gonna happen to some degree, no matter what machine you're on, what hat you're pressing, whatever. So what I would do is I'd actually release it from the machine after the first initial press and kind of roll it back a little bit and give it kind of like a halfway press for 10 seconds or something like that. And it would completely smooth it out and get rid of it like it was never there, like these ones. But that's just adding more time onto the job and that's you know not what you want in this industry, obviously. So apparently this new platen eliminates the need for both of those things and I'm gonna do a long-term test on this, but I'm too impatient. I wanna see like right now if that's true. So let's lock this thing on here. Well, <laughs> the first part's cured. There are absolutely no gaps in this thing anywhere. Man, that lower platen is doing some work. This thing is already super hot. And I'm impatient. I wanna press this thing right now and see if it leaves a mark in it. Oh, the top crease line thing, 
not an issue anymore. Next is the addition of the IQ interface that's looking like it's being blown out by the lights in here right now, but this comes from their bigger Fusion IQ heat presses, which I have one of those, and I can say this is amazing. These things are fully touchscreen. They give you a live readout of the upper and lower iron temperatures, as well as time and pressure. They're fully programmable, so you can easily plug in and save an infinite amount of different presets for all the different types of hats and applications that you have going on in your shop. This is something that I really wish the old unit had, and now we finally got it in this thing, so that's awesome. And it also comes set up with a few different presets in there for different stalls products, which is very helpful because I use a lot of those around here. And kind of a combination of the live readout and presets, you can actually adjust those things on the fly, which is really cool. So let's say I wanna adjust my time. I just tap the 30 seconds right here and I can adjust it up and down with these little arrows beside it. Or if I wanna make a big jump, there's this kind of like progress bar type of deal at the top of the screen here. I can just tap within this progress bar and make big jumps like all the way up to 60 seconds, hit the check mark and we're done and saved and that preset's locked in like that, which is super awesome. That works with the time, it works with the temperature, all that stuff. And something very cool that this IQ system does, at least if you're a big nerd like I am, is it can be set up to launch all kinds of data out into the cloud, which is amazing. So you can jump online and check how many presses this thing's done, it's active time and a whole bunch of different metrics, which is super cool if you wanna see how much work you're getting done, or if you have employees, you can see how much work they're getting done. And as I'm looking to start hiring people around here soon, that's a cool thing to me. And other than those major things, it's still got the auto open feature, which again is amazing. You can multitask, you can kind of set up your next hat as one's pressing, which is so good. They don't mention this anywhere, but I noticed it right away that it has a completely new hold down setup from the old press, which looks a lot better to me. The pressure adjustment knob is now easily accessible right on top of it, where the old one, it was kind of hidden way underneath there. And it was a real pain in the ass to get at. So now this is very nice to have. I also noticed that the jaw opening on this thing is almost double the amount of the old press. And that's such a welcomed upgrade <laughs> because I can't tell you how many times on that old press that I burnt my hands and knuckles on that thing and created like a whole dictionary of new swear word combinations. <laughs> so this is a welcome addition. It also is completely wide open through the middle. So it looks like it's gonna be able to top load or side load very quickly and very easily. And one more thing that really jumped out at me was this thing is built like a brick shit house. <laughs> I'm not kidding you. The old press was built very well too. I have zero complaints in that department, but they really took it up a notch with this thing. There is zero plastic on it. It is metal everywhere. It looks like a damn tank and like it's gonna be able to take a beating in my shop for years. And if you've been around this channel for any length of time, you know I'm basically a champion of breaking things. So we're really gonna put that to the test. Huh, well, that's cool. This was only really supposed to be an unboxing video, but number one, I don't really wanna leave you guys or myself hanging like that. I wanna see this thing do something. And number two is I just found this in the box that this came in and they actually shipped these out with some little test items that you can try out with this thing. So I actually just found in here, they have a 3D embroidered patch in here, which this thing would normally be super difficult to heat press on with the old one. And with this one, having the bottom heat on there, I feel like it's gonna be very easy. So. Let's stick this on something. So 3D embroidered patches were very difficult to heat press before because, well, I don't know if you can tell on camera, but these things are pretty thick. So that heat used to have to travel all the way through the iron, then through this thick patch, then through the glue, then into the hat to create that bond. And it took a long time for that to get through there. Sometimes you'd mess up. Sometimes you have overheating going on. You end up squishing this thing and it was just, it was a nightmare. So general, I used to just full on avoid them because it was too difficult to do. Now with this bottom heat situation, uh, that's why I want to try this first because because that's really gonna put this thing to the test right now and how good it is. Let's get this thing in a usable position. So I'm gonna stick this on one of these Richardson seven panels. I don't know, I have a whole bunch of these laying around there throwaways to me, so this is a perfect tester. And man, it goes on that new platen so good and that new hold down, man. The, the old hold down was kind of skinny, so sometimes it would kind of go through the, the hoop on the snapback and this one's got some flares going out to it, so. Yeah, I can lock this thing down on there solid. That's awesome. Let's get our little 3D embroidered patch on there. This is. If this comes out straight, I'm gonna be so surprised looking at this upside down and sideways at the same time. And lastly, we're gonna use one of these little foam pads. These actually come with the press too. These are heat conductive foam pads. I believe they're eighth inch, quarter inch, and three eighths or something like that. And what these are gonna do actually is protect that 3D embroidered emblem from getting squished, obviously. And it's also gonna to conform to the shape of that emblem to give us a nice even press surface for the iron to hit. So judging by the looks of that thing, we're gonna use the middle one, which I think is quarter inch. So I don't know, we'll slap that thing on there, see how it goes. All right, let's do this. I'm kind of excited. Ooh, that opening is aggressive. Let's check this bad boy out. That looks pretty damn good already. Dude, that's, it's on there. All right, well, quick first impression. 
this thing is amazing. This 3D embroidered patch went on there so clean and so easy, especially for the very first time I've ever pressed anything on with this. I honestly can't believe that because these used to be very difficult to put on with the old hat press and that's why I kind of avoided them. It pressed on there very quickly. I only pressed it for 50 seconds and that seems like a long time, but when you're doing 3D stuff and you have a thick cover sheet like this thing, then you need the extra time and yeah, 50 seconds, this thing is on there rock solid. You should not mess with these things for at least 24 hours after you press them and I've, it's been like three minutes, four minutes, something like that. Just enough for this thing to cool down and I'm picking at the edge of this thing and it's not coming up. So it's on there very solid. And thanks to having the heated lower platen is I didn't have to do a pre-press step to pre-warm this thing up. It was already warming up as I was loading it on there. And actually, as I was taping the little emblem onto there, I could kind of feel the glue softening up as I was taping it down. So that was really cool. And thanks to this little guy right here, this 3D embroidered emblem, looks just as good as before we put it on there. There is no scorch marks, there's no flat spots, there's no nothing going on with this thing. And again, that was something that was hard to avoid before having this press and before having one of these around. So yeah, I am uh, pretty stoked to have this thing here now to say the least. And there you have it, ladies and gentlemen, the new Stalls 360 IQ hat heat press. And so far, I can't find anything wrong with this thing. <laughs> we're definitely gonna test it out a lot more though. That's why they sent it over here. So we're gonna try out a few more videos yet. We're gonna try some leather patches with this thing. I've got those on the way. We're gonna do some digitally printed heat transfer vinyl. We're gonna do some weird placement things that are normally complicated. And please, if you have any ideas that you want me to try with this thing, plug them down in the comments below because I will add them to those videos. But as of right now, honestly, I think they created the perfect hat heat press. And that's coming from me. I'm like the most critical person of everything, especially things within my own shop. So I can't believe those words just came out of my mouth, but yeah, I think so. So if you're in the market for a new hat heat press, definitely give this thing a look. I dropped a link in the description for you guys so that you can check it out and scoop one up for yourselves. I believe these things are shipping right now and yeah. I am very grateful to have one of these in my shop. And please do me a favor, drop a thumbs up on this thing, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And as always, we'll see you again in the next one.